We hear in the scriptures the call to repentance, both in the Old Testament, where God is making it clear that his ways are not unfair, but rather it is that our hearts are often not following what he is saying. So through the prophet Ezekiel, he tells us specifically that we are called to turn away from iniquity and to be forgiven. Jesus shows us that the iniquity isn't just external bad actions. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say to me in confession, Father, I'm a good person. I don't kill. And Jesus makes it quite clear. He says, that doesn't matter. Like it does, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that one is all of a sudden righteous just because one doesn't kill. Because he tells us, and this should convict every single one of us, he says, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Basically, our righteousness is supposed to um, be greater than the, than the most pious and devout daily mass goer who would be constantly going to adoration. Think about it. That's what that means. The Pharisees and scribes were by no means worldly people. They were very religious people. But sometimes they got caught only in looking at, I'm not doing the external ill, but they weren't questioning whether their hearts were in the right place. And so Jesus makes it quite clear. He says, okay, you've heard this commandment, do not kill, but I'm going to say to you something else. I'm going to say to you that if you use anger against your brother in a, in a, in, in a malicious way, that you're guilty. That if you call your brother these names, Raka, which meant like blockhead, basically. Or you fool. You'll be li- liable to fiery Gehenna. This is very important. Because it shows that Jesus is getting at the root of the sin in the heart. Because before we, we would want to actually kill a person, the first thing we do is we diminish their dignity. That's the first thing. So this is what he's showing us. That any time we diminish somebody's dignity through epitaphs and curses, that basically we are using violence against them. Translate this to watching or reading whatever news source and complaining or calling names of any politician that one might disagree with. Oops, we're killing people. We're breaking that commandment. It goes down deep. It asks of us a righteousness beyond our own ability. Well, thanks be to God, Jesus is the one who enables us and empowers us. By the way, if we're frightened by this, okay, we want to we recall when Jesus is talking about this interior part, the interior cleansing, this is what he says. You know, settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge and the judge will hand you over to the guard and you will be thrown into prison Catch this, though. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. Is there a release from hell? No. It's eternal, right? It's eternal punishment. So if Jesus is talking about being released from something, that you won't be released until you've paid the last penny, is he talking about hell? No. Purgatory. So if anybody ever says to you, oh, you Catholics, you believe in that purgatory stuff, where's that in the scriptures? Ah, Matthew... Matthew chapter 5. There it is. Just that he didn't like, here's a treatise on the afterlife. Hell, purgatory, heaven. Here's how you go there. You know, which angels are involved, which demons are involved. Instead, what we have is a call. Obviously, we don't aim for purgatory. Anybody aiming for purgatory is acting foolish in the spiritual life. We don't say, I just want to eke into purgatory. That's really insulting to Jesus who died for us. Instead, we should be saying, Jesus, I want it all. I want the complete and total, the complete and total sanctification that you obtained for me on the cross. I want it all. 
I want it all. Both the cleansing of sin, that is, the ceasing of evil actions, and the spurning and the growth of virtue. Jesus, I want it all. It's Jesus who gives us the grace. It is the Holy Spirit who gives us the grace. It is God the Father who gives us the grace to put aside sin and to grow in virtue. So at this Mass, where we receive Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity, we ask him that particular grace, that he may convict us of any areas by means of the Holy Spirit where we have allowed that subtle animosity or that subtle hatred to be in our hearts to then, you know, use violence against people. And that he may give us the inspiration as to how he wants us to act in particular circumstances. He could say, don't talk to that person for a bit, wait. He could say, wait till the right time. Or he could say, um, talk to them and, and explain to them this. And if that doesn't work, then he'll give you other instruction. The Lord wants to teach us. That's what he has said, that he will be our teacher. He has said that the Holy Spirit will instruct us. And our Father in heaven is a good father, and therefore, like any father, teaches his children how to keep his name holy.